We're going to have each director introduce themselves, their film, and who they brought with them, and then they're going to do a wild Q&A. So enjoy. Hello, I'm uh, Josh Safty. My brother Benny and me made Black Balloon, and uh, this is Sam, our producer. Craig McNeil and we did Henley um, and this is my producer and director of photography Noah Greenberg <laughs> and co-writer and author Clay McLeod Chapman. Thanks. Hi, I'm Brooke Sweeney. I directed OK Breathe Orally yeah, awesome. and this is my composer, <laughs> Laura Ortman. <laughs> Popcorn for everyone. Yeah, we brought popcorn. And um, <laughs> this is my actress, Kendra yeah. Milochek. It's good. I think she got to say it. Hello, uh, I'm Geta Vecili. I'm the director of the film The Return. And um, this is my editor, Keka, uh, producer, Miriam Jonti, and associate producer, AJ. I'm Todd Sklar, and I directed and uh, wrote 92 Skybox Alonzo Morning Rookie Card, and my lead actor and co-writer, Alex Rennie, is right here. Andrew Larson. I'm Jesse Ennis. And I'm Sarah Ramos. And we made the arm. Yeah. <laughs> two-sided answer. So in the film that was very well planned, it was written out uh, piece by piece and actually we shot it kind of in chunks because due to the props that were being broken and the way we were ripping shirts and messing people up, it kind of had to be kind of like strategically done. Oh yeah, we rented all their clothing, we just ruined all this clothing. It was awesome. uh, but in real life, uh, Alex is my best friend and we're kind of like brothers and over the past couple of years we have a lot of spontaneous contests like that that don't end in fist fights, but <laughs> Those are very spontaneous, but in the film that was very well planned, and they're just very good actors at making it seem natural. Delightful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Back, back. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in the return, uh, fantastic film, and that series of dialogue between you had us laughing and then thinking seriously about just fantastic, kind of explain the dialogue process from the the humor subtle suddenly done to into that more serious moment yeah uh, when i got the screenplay it was uh, i love the plot it's, it was a very very uh, good subject and but i i felt like i needed to do something else with with it so um uh, I, I was wondering what's the way to tell this secret, this story. So uh, for for me, I thought that the best way was if uh, the girl laughs, and then that will make her um, she, she she can she can talk easily after that. So that was uh, actually one of the biggest requests for this film. Uh, the film was shot um, in mumblecore style, so the dialogues and everything was the actors. Uh, I um, I wanted, I knew very well where each scene should go until which was the culminant point of each scene. But then it was the actors. I would stay behind them and let them um, improvise and write good things that I liked. And I would go and say, let's do that again, and we go this this way and blah blah. So yeah. Fantastic job, great. Thank you. I wanted to say also that it was very touching and very real, and you don't see a lot of that in movies anymore. 
And uh, it was super. Thank you. that they were going to maybe find that little girl in an orphanage and adopt her back. That was the feeling that I was left with and wonder. Yeah, well, that's, that's kind of true. That, that, that's, we wanted to, I don't know. The guy, actually, for us, the guy was wondering, can he take that girl back home? So yes. that was it, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I'm glad you know. Made you hope so. Yeah. 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 Actually, how the balloons moved. Yeah. Um, I can tell you that there was no computer manipulation <laughs> happening. Um, you know, just uh, it. I'm uh, I'm from New York. I've been born and raised in Queens and live in uh, lived there my whole life. And uh, there's a, there's a certain haze that I'm really involved. That I'm really interested in. Right now, I'm very very calm. I've had a very long day, but I tend to be quite manic. That's when I'm happiest, at least. And. Uh, uh, I don't know, I just, um, my brother and I, my brother's not here, he's in Park City, we were really interested in this in this washing machine effect that life seems to have, where you get thrown through the tumble and then you get spit out and you have these moments to yourself. And, uh, our Andy Spade, who, who created the, the project, uh, sent me a video, I've worked with him on a couple of feature films, and he sent me a video at four in the morning of just this balloon, black balloon getting run over a bunch on the street, and it wasn't popping. And, uh, he he's you know he said something like ah you know the red balloon um, how about let's make the black balloon and uh, he said something along the lines of like wouldn't it be great if, if it would be terrible if we we could never pop something like that something drunken but it was great <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, I, and then my brother and I kind of decided to write write this this you know we're, we've been developing this project for the Diamond District for like two years now this was a nice. As short films are a great exercise to kind of um, kind of run with it. So, and the the balloon again was, for the most part, if you're walking down the street, you would you would think you were seeing something magical or real in a way. Yeah, I'm very interested in, in the idea of creating a scenario on a street and someone walking past it and going home that night and saying, Ah, I saw this wayward balloon that just was seemed to be walking amongst New York City. People, so I, I, I'm I'm really interested in that conversation. So we tried to make it as real as possible by doing this cool thing that we developed. <laughs> Trip. How many balloons did you actually use in the filming? We were trying to figure that out. Well, the red, the red, the beginning batch, we had like three sets of a hundred. Which were we lost? We accidentally dropped, let go of one for real. <laughs> <laughs> and we were shooting, we were, you know, midtown. I, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of a lot of rubber being released into the atmosphere that day. Um, uh, probably a hundred, two hundred, three hundred black balloons. I don't know. Hundred. I don't know. Uh, John Ferguson, who did, I called him the magician. He's also like six foot six, the most unique looking person. And he just had this thing called the string thing, and he would arrive at the location. He'd show us the string thing, and it had, you know, this cool contraption. And we would look at it, and we would say, "Okay, go, let's go with A3." And then he would go, and he would have all these um, boxes for the sizes for the stages of the movie. And he was just blowing up balloons all the time. Yeah. And at the dump, uh, it was like, uh, you know, we were walking among um, grounds that no humans have ever stepped on. It was just pure methane. And it was some freak uh, global warming day where it was like snowing and 20 degrees in October, and it was free, and he couldn't tie the balloons. <laughs> He's amazing person. <laughs> Hundred balloons. He's alive. He's not dead. Yet. <laughs>